Uh, very excited that you're here. Julie and I have done this a couple times. Um, for me, the last time we were invited uh, to the London uh, Scrum Gathering, and uh, we did it there to a packed room and really got some really great feedback. And so we've incorporated some of that feedback and wanted to, uh, to try it again with all of you here at DC SUG, so we're really excited to uh, have this opportunity to obviously be here with all of you. As uh, Brian said, uh, my name is Mark. I am a managing consultant and agile coach here at Excella uh, for almost three years. And um, a little, back, little bit of a background uh, for me is I came up through the ranks of being a business analyst, requirements analyst, then into IT project management, very much in a waterfall-based approach. I worked for what is now defunct SRA uh, for quite some time. And um, there was something about working in Waterfall, I didn't know what it was, but it, it wasn't for me. And uh, one day I woke up and was told that we were an Agile company. And uh, yes, exactly, it's kind of funny. But uh, slowly began to understand what that meant back in my Agile, or back in my SRA days, and uh, became a Scrum Master. <clears throat> and then from there, for several years, I was a Scrum Master, and then um, moved more into Agile coaching. So. I've been in the Agile space for about uh, 10 years now. And um, this workshop is great because it is a small facet of a very important part of coaching, I feel, and that is obviously observation. So we're gonna talk a lot about that in moments to come. Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you guys for making it out on a Monday. Mm -hmm. I know Mondays are long days to begin with, so we really appreciate you guys being here to participate with us. Um, so, as Mark said, Julie Wyman, I work for Excella as an Agile coach. I really enjoy interacting with teams and trying to grow ourselves and look for some of the small things that are attainable and that we can apply at any project that we're on to make ourselves better. So I think that's a lot of what this workshop tonight is about, and I look forward to interacting with you guys. Okay. All right. All so. right. Let's move on. That is not working. That is not working. So we're going to go with it, <laughs> and I'll uh, just move them along for now. Oh, sure. Okay. So, yeah, so this workshop, like Mark said, is really all about practicing observational skills, something that a lot of us probably do in any role that we're in on any given day, but that we may not spend that much time actually thinking about or bringing a lot of intention to how we're observing or what we're observing or how we frame and share our observations. So that's really about what today is focused on, is how can we be a little bit more intentional, how can we try to be a little bit more focused to try to find uh, nuggets of, of what's happening in our teams and our organizations that we can really use to help ourselves provide better focused coaching and support to our organizations and to have a little bit of fun. So it's gonna definitely be reliant on you guys to dive in and participate and share with us what you're feeling and, and what you're experiencing so that we can work it through together. Okay, with that said, this is a very, very interactive workshop today, so everybody will be involved, and we will shuffle people around in just a moment to make sure all the tables are filled uh, with individuals. But to provide a little bit of context, this is where we want to kind of start you off, okay? And you can obviously read, and I'll read with you, uh, but I want you to imagine that you've been recently hired as a coach, a consultant, perhaps a scrum master, and you decide that the best way to start, start your engagement working with this new team is to simply, simply observe the team working, okay? That's the context that we're gonna start with today, okay? So you can imagine yourself doing that. So real quickly, what types of things do you think you might want to notice or just notice right off hand, given this context? Yeah. The flow of communication. The flow of communication? Okay, it can be a little more specific. Four people with one person doing all the talking, or there's a balance between the communications and the type of Okay, so flow of communication and the balance, if it's four talking and maybe not one person or vice versa. Okay? Okay, who else? Yes? Do people feel psychologically safe in the space? Do people feel psychologically safe in the space? Okay, good. How might you notice that happening or not? Okay, so if they're not talking, there might be some something happening there. Okay, sounds good. 
Who else? Anyone else? Yes. What are people's roles in the room? Okay. I want to know, especially if you do know coming in what the roles are, you might be able to use that to, okay? Yeah. Compliance to norms. Compliance to norms, okay. Okay, and do you want to give an example of what that might mean? Uh, say every, uh, every, every day you store your code in the uh, code repository. Uh, but uh, this guy over here doesn't feel because it's taking the next time. Okay. Uh, or uh, we need to make sure that the code is tested before it's released, but the product owner wants to get it out of the field as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. So, uh, if you if you understand what the norms are, you might get a sense of that, and then you might witness or observe things that it might be askew from what those norms might be. Okay. Julie, anything on your end? No. One more, Matthias. Um, what seems to be the general level of happiness, and is that like sort of the base level, and then are there specific times or occasions when the stress levels go up? And Okay. So, is there a general sense of happiness, and do you notice stress levels going up, and <coughs> and why those stress levels, or and, un, under what circumstances might that be happening? Great. Okay. Great ideas. Great things to think about. Great things to look for. Uh, we are. Thank you. So, one thing to keep in mind, like an iceberg, we you know realize I don't know what the percent is, but we've often been told that most of the iceberg is, of course, underneath the surface of the water, right? So what we may be observing is very surface level. Could we also be realizing or at least be observing things that might be more of an undercurrent? Okay. Um, and some of that, uh, I think through the techniques that we're going to be practicing today, we might be able to perhaps unsurface some of that stuff today through different ways to observe and techniques. Yeah. So like I said, we do observation all the time especially if you're in a Scrum Master role or a coach role. But what we're going to show today is not an exhaustive list, but just a couple, a handful of examples of some different aspects or, or types of interactions that you could observe. Because we want to see if by being a little bit more intentional, thoughtful about kind of focusing in on some areas, can we get richer information than just kind <coughs> of sitting back and letting everything hit us at once and then trying to sort through it. So we're just going to go through couple of examples, start with some things that we think are a little bit more common or that we may kind of think through and we typically think about observation and then get into some things that we may not always think about as much. So to start us off, body language, something that a lot of us probably have some thought about. We probably have heard this before. You know, we may have some misconceptions about what some different body language means. It may not always be accurate to what we think, but it's probably something that we're used to at least picking up on, taking in. You know, is someone crossing their arms? Are they nodding their head a lot? Are they looking away? Are they leaning in? You know, all these things, again, not necessarily knowing what they mean, but we're kind of used to picking up on those physical cues and seeing how people themselves are acting. I'm gesturing right now, right? But like, what are we doing as you're either speaking yourself or in an interaction with someone else or even in a group. So body language is one that we think we you know, probably do pick up on, but there are some others as well. So tone of voice is obviously one that you can think about. If I'm talking very softly, that could mean something is, it could mean something. We don't know what it necessarily means. If you're hearing somebody talk very loudly, it could be something else to pick up on. Perhaps you have fast talkers. Perhaps you have very slow talkers as well. Uh, again, tone of voice could be something to actually think. When does it get softer? So maybe you want to pair it against a particular moment happening. Okay, uh, you know what? What was that trigger necessarily? Uh, perhaps somebody walked into the room. The tone of the conversation may have changed. Things to think about. So another <clears throat> area of observation could be the pronouns that people are using. Now this is not one that I really paid attention to before having a conversation, a conversation with another coach when he kind of mentioned, well, you know, have you noticed are people using each other's names when they talk to each other? Am I saying, well, he said this, or am I saying, well, Mark offered this idea, right? 
again, it may or may not mean something, but are we noticing how people are talking? Is there a lot of we, or is there a lot of I and you? You know, again, it's just a data point, but it's something that we may not, without kind of thinking a little bit more, be used to picking up and seeing again. When is that, when is that happening? Was there a shift? You know, did something else happen that led us down a different path? So the use of pronouns could be another interesting situation. So physical space is also something to think about. And tonight's going to be really interesting because we got a lot of people and uh, we got some good physical space. But, uh, you know, how are people positioned around the table? How far apart may they be? Uh, if you happen to know leaders or managers that are also in the room, how do people react to the fact that they're in the room? Does the manager more of a sit back and kind of overlook things or are they right in there? How do others uh, react to the fact that uh, somebody might be in uh, the room as well. Is there space in the room that's not being used? And perhaps uh, there's a space that is being used a lot. Maybe there's something going on there that uh, you might want to understand and uncover at some point. Yeah, are people oriented in a way that allows them to kind of see each other? Or are they looking at something else? Just everything about how the group has chosen to use their space could be an indicator or some useful data point for us. So another one to observe is collaboration. Now collaboration can be really broad, but we'd be looking for some more specific indicators of what does that mean? How is this group working together? Does there seem to be some kind of director who's guiding everyone, who's kind of leading and ushering? Do there tend to be you know, someone off in the corner doing solo work? One big group, lots of small groups. How, how is the team or the organization working together? Is there a lot of discussion? Does it seem like people are frequently offering ideas and how are they being received in the group? Or is it just kind of one idea and that's what people use for the rest of the session? Does it seem like people are offering disagreements and challenges or there's just an initial consensus? So all mm -hmm. these things are different aspects about how a group is actually working together that are specific things that we could be picking up on and giving us clues to where we may want to have some follow-up coaching conversations. And decision making. So things to think about, things to might, you know, might want to notice. Are, how are decisions being made in the room right there in real time? Um, is it uh, in a collaborative nature? Uh, is it uh, one person making decisions for everybody else? And maybe everyone else is kind of, a, you know, kind of agreeing along with what, uh, what's happening in the room. Um, are decisions being directed upon, or, are or is it more of a consensus-based? Uh, thinking out loud is another interesting one, too. Um, the one team that I happen to be working with right now, they all think out loud, and it's to the point where you've got to really tell them to be quiet at times, because they talk over each other. But that's how they, that's just this particular team is how they operate. So is by thinking out loud, or the opposite, obviously, uh, thinking all to themselves, and then you don't know what's going on. So that's also something to think about. So one other thing that you could observe about how team works is how do they choose to share information? So again, like Mark said, are they talking it out, hashing it out? Is there a lot of conversation? Is it a team that seems to go up to the whiteboard and they're documenting a lot of stuff? Is it things that are written up, you know, paragraphs that they're reading? When decisions are made, how do they choose to document them and disperse them and share them with a group? Um, just a level of information and detail around how is this group or these people choosing to work together. So that was not at all an exhaustive list, but I think it, it helped to kind of show us when we say, oh, let's just observe that team, how many <laughs> different things you could choose to hone in on, how many things you could focus in and try to get a little bit more detail around to try to just have that be some data, some information that you use to inquire further and really figure out what's going on. Those are just some examples. But let's say we've done that. Let's say I've, I've really spent time kind of just embedded with a team, just taking in all these things. I have some notes. Now I'm ready to share them because I want to I wanna make an impact and I want to work with these individuals or this team. All right. So there's a lot we could say, but we've boiled it down to basically our two key points. The first is that you want to make sure when you're sharing your observations to state them factually in very neutral language. And really importantly, you want to avoid interpretation. You want to avoid 
assigning some judgment, interpreting them, saying that you know what they mean. I think you may have noticed when Mark and I were even describing these areas of observation, we kept saying, you could observe this, that, or the other. You may not know exactly what it means, but it's an interesting piece of data that you might want to follow up on. And that's because the actual observation itself is just your entry point. It's your entry point into having that deeper discussion. So for example, if I, I've been watching Mark's team. He asked me to come in and give him some feedback. And then afterwards I say, hey Mark, man, why were you so angry in that meeting? You were just sitting back, arms crossed. You didn't offer up a word. What had you so annoyed? How did I do at sharing my I'm observation? I'm having a great day today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark's saying, what are you talking about? I am feeling great. What did I do? Yeah, I interpreted it. Now, there were some facts that I mixed in there. It is a factual observation that he sat with his arms crossed leaning back. It's a factual observation that he did not speak up in the meeting. But I went ahead and I decided, I know why you did that. It's because you were annoyed. It's because you were angry. I've gone ahead and made these assumptions. So now if, if I lead with that and sharing my observation with Mark, he's already pushing me away. He's like, you don't get me. What are you talking about? I had a great day. Where is this coming from? So a better place to start would have just been to say, hey, Mark, I noticed that you didn't speak up in that meeting. Was there anything that was holding you back today? Not really. No, I just decided to listen to everyone's responses today. So I, can, I could ask some more probing questions from there, but it's, we can have more of a conversation <clears> because <throat> it starts off a much more neutral footing. And I'm not telling him that I know what happened and I know why. I'm just sharing what I observed and giving space for us to then inquire and ask more questions and to try to figure out, is this something that's maybe worth going down the path? Or maybe Mark just had an off day. There's literally nothing wrong. This is not worth me getting involved in. We're fine. Move on to something else. So when, after we take the time to really make our observations, this is one of the hardest parts. It's one of the hardest parts for me, and I keep talking about this when we do these workshops, because our brains are wired to make sense of things. They're wired to see something, find a pattern, and say, oh, okay, I've seen this before, I know what this means, and then to want to help. But this is where we can really do our teams and individuals that we're working with a big service, if we pause, <laughs> if we put a little pause between that observation and the sharing of it. I have found that it's really been useful for me to write down my observations and then read them with the lens of this before I would go and share them because even sometimes the way I've written them down has given away that I let some interpretation or some assigning of meaning slip in. So sounds basic, but this is one of the biggest things that we want to try to encourage you to practice in the workshop portion today. Yeah, and this is why when we, <clears throat> when we designed this, <clears throat> we wanted to provide that context of being a consultant. Any context will work, obviously. But in our roles, and, and, may, and I'm sure some of, a lot of your roles out there too, we need to be very sensitive about the relationship that we're establishing with the people that we're working with, especially as consultants and scrum masters and you know, agile coaches and, and what have you, but any context. But being very aware of that interpretation we do want to preserve a relationship that's been established or if we're building trust with the team that we're working with. Not doing exactly what Julie was doing in that example is obviously something we, you know, we don't want to do. Uh, so uh, that's why we had that context in the beginning. So when we go through our exercises today, uh, it might help just a little bit to, to imagine yourself as, hey, I've been brought in to actually help this team as a consultant okay, if that's the case, I, I want to put my best foot forward here. Um, I want to keep these two basic bullet points in mind as, uh, as I go through and, and think about these observations. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely true, but even any team, <coughs> if you're an internal sure. team member, if you're a coach for a company full-time, aside from you know, that, that external relationship, even so, any observations you share will be undercut if someone feels like, you didn't understand why I was doing that. You already are you know, pretending to have me figured out. So I think anyone can benefit from just that pause. Again, like the actual factual observation is important because it can lead to a good conversation, but it will be a more meaningful one, whether it's with a client, whether it's just with a colleague that you work with all the time. If you start from a very inquisitive mindset of just 
stating what you saw and letting the conversation unfold from there. So. Matthias. I know this is very comfortable for me yeah, actually. Same. Yeah, yeah, I do this all the time. Yeah. So that, that's one of the worst ones in my opinion. But also it, that triggered me thinking about um, it, it seems like um, as I said, like this whole coming in and observing for a while. Um, I think one of the things that's important from that perspective is that you, you kind of compare people against their own baseline. So that like if somebody, you know, never crosses their arms and always, you know, yeah. is like wide open and then all of a sudden they hear something and they go like this. That's different from someone who does this all the time, yeah. doesn't mean they're constantly mad. So to me, I think the, 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 um, the change in behavior, you know, some people are kind of always quiet, and that's, that may in and of itself be something that you yeah. want to talk to them about and see, can I, you know, pull this person out a little bit? But, you know, the situation you just described, somebody who talks a lot, and then in that meeting, they don't say anything. Right. Um, so you know, that popped up in my head as we were talking about that. Yeah, I think Matisse's point. point is really good as having enough <laughs> basis for your observations, right? You don't want to just observe 10 minutes and then, you know, launch into providing feedback. You kind of want to have some history and to see over time. And that's kind of what Mark was getting at in some of the examples he gave. He said, what other things are happening at the same time that triggered changes, right? So if the room was really loud and everyone was talking and everyone is involved and then one person entered the room and sat at the front of the table and everyone stopped talking, that's a change, right? And so what are, what are different events happening at the same time and what other changes are they triggering? So yeah, that's really good. Any other questions? Julia, Mark, real quick, we didn't have the extra mic to run for the audience to pick up on the question, so either restate or oh. you know, the observation of the restated question was just yeah. captured. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other things that stood out to you before we turn it on you guys? All right, well, we'll put you guys to work and then we'll see what stands out. So really, I mean, I think I mentioned at the beginning, this is pretty simple. We just wanted to give you enough to kind of get it in your mind, thinking about these things, these different areas that you could observe, how you're gonna share your observations. And really the whole rest of the workshop is intended for you guys to put it to practice. So to give everyone in this room an opportunity to be an observer and also to feel what it's like to be observed. Um, and so we're gonna run through two rounds um, and then we're also gonna have small group debrief and then we'll close with a larger group debrief that will kind of tie it all together and we'll also allow us to talk through just the mechanics of this workshop if you ever wanted to use this with your teams. All right. So, oh, one thing I did wanna call out and mention, this uh, workshop activity piece is definitely inspired by an activity that Esther Derby and Don Gray run in their coaching beyond the team training that they offer. Um, this is where I first experienced it and then it triggered some conversations with other coaches that I work with. Um, and so really we've taken some inspiration, tweaked it a little for our purposes, but we definitely wanna give them credit for inspiring it. So I'm gonna give you guys the lay of the land, make sure that everybody understands where we're gonna be going and then it's really gonna be turning it over to you all. So I mentioned two rounds, two rounds because we want everybody to feel what it's like to be an observer and also to be observed. So we're gonna be practicing in small groups for this workshop, your small group is your table. So that's kind of why we, we purposely have the groups a little bit larger than we would have because we wanna make sure that the groups are sufficiently large to have some interactions to allow you to observe. So if this is, this is one of our small groups, when we kick off round one, Half of you guys are gonna decide, I'm gonna be a builder, I'm a doer, and the other half are gonna be an observer, just for round one. And we're going to give you guys a challenge, and that's what the builders will be doing. The observers will be practicing, making observations, and then we'll have time to debrief and share them. And then round two, we'll switch, and everyone who was a builder will become an observer. Sound good so far? Question? <laughs> that is a workshop while a meetup observation. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but it is, it is a fact. That is true. Um, but I think all of our groups are well enough sized. We want, if, if you are someone right now who is sitting aside, we'll want you to 
Yeah. Come join a table just so, so that you can a be a full here, participant. Here, so here, yeah, we have here. openings here. The tables don't all need to be equally sized. I think the groups we have will, will work, but definitely maybe a couple people can join yeah, this table, and that'll be great. Two here, yeah. I think these guys One are going to there. Enjoy. There's yeah. two right here in this table. And this one's open. Yeah. George, this okay. is open too. Sure. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Sure. I think we're good. Did you get one, George? We're balanced out? Okay. Great. All right, so actually, just give us a second and then you guys are jumping right ahead, which I appreciate. Uh, but we'll just give you a little bit more information and then let you decide how you want to organize. So these are our round one specific instructions. So yes, our very first step is that at your table, we want it to be about 50-50. So go ahead, don't take more than 30 seconds. Just decide for round one, who wants to be the active builder and who wants to start by being an observer? Question. Yes. yes. Are, are we going to be doing the same exercise? No. No, no, okay. no, no, that would <laughs> yeah, not be fair in, in the you know, sense of competition. That would, that would be an advantage. So no, we will, we will be switching the activity. Yep, so go ahead right now. Again, we want about 50-50, but just quickly decide who's going to start out as a builder and who's going to start out as an observer. We will ring the bells at 30 seconds. <laughs> I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> Mark's been waiting all day to do that. <laughs> so you guys <laughs> gave him some fun there. Awesome. Are all of our tables set? Let's see a thumbs up. Woo, okay. Excited. So all of those of you who decided to be observers for round one, thank you. What we would like to ask you guys to do is to each go ahead and take one of the worksheets. So we have in the middle of the table a bag that has all the supplies you'll need. So you'll find some worksheets folded in half. And what the worksheets have on them is those, those observation areas that what we went through before. Physical space, collaboration, decision making, pronouns. What we'd like to recommend is that for those of you who are observers, pick just one of these areas. Now I know this may feel a little bit awkward, we're used to kind of trying to observe everything at once. But just for the sake of this exercise, pick one of them. Just one. Talk amongst yourselves. It'll work best if you guys each pick different areas. So if I'm an observer, I might say, hey, OK, I'll focus on decision making. I'll focus on use of physical space. So talk amongst the observers and each try to pick one area. And for the whole five minutes of the exercise, you're really just going to be focused in on this one observation area. Sound good? All right, so we're going to give you guys about a minute to just quickly make your selections. Go ahead and hand out the worksheets so everyone can see them. Yeah, yeah you, don't, you don't have to cover all of them, but you can each just pick one. Each observer pick one area. But for now, the observers, uh, each one of you picks one area.
be part of her book talk at the same time? Well, I just switched it to where I was going to try to listen in on that table somewhat, oh. but it's going to be hard. Like, it's going to yeah. be hard. Okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, if you want to mute, well, just mute for now. Okay. Okay. Well, we're not done yet, so. Okay, you're not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like everyone has worked together with the observers and decided which area they're going to observe. You'll know that each of the bags has Sharpies and post-its, so what we'd like to recommend is for each observer go ahead and take a stack of the post-its and your own Sharpie, and as you're going through the exercise and they're building, you're just writing your observations on the post-its. So whatever comes to you for your area of observation, kind of just write one observation per post-it. You can just keep them in front of you. You don't have to put them anywhere. But just make sure that each observer has one Sharpie and a pack of post-its. Builders, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That's it. <laughs> All right, so I want to make sure that you guys are fully prepared. You're going to have five minutes to execute on your challenge. You know you can do it. Five minutes to figure out. This isn't five minutes of planning, then five minutes of doing five. This is just five minutes. So however you want to organize is up to you. You have this full room of the ATX to use. So up to you if you want to rearrange your space, you have that opportunity. So your challenge is going to be to build a five foot tall structure out of the index cards that we provided. If you run out of index cards, we have more. If you're wondering how tall five feet is, it's about my height. So a five foot tall structure out of index cards in five minutes. Any questions? Any questions before we turn on the timer? Yes. <laughs> stay in the room. Stay in the room. Okay. Yeah. No, only index cards. Just the only index the cards to build. The index cards. Yeah. No tape. Any other questions before we go forward? Move forward. Yes. Has to be freestanding. All right. All right. Looks like you guys are off, so we're going to let you go. Five minutes. Go. Go. Observers, observe only. Observers, if you need to move to get closer to the Yeah. Mark. Well. Okay, so we need a whole bunch of 
observer, kind of go one by one, say and share with your group the area that you observe. So I observed information sharing, I observed decision making, and then actually read to them the actual notes that you wrote down on your post-it and go through and share all of them. And then after that, go ahead and have the builders share whether they even noticed that they were being observed, if it impacted them in any way. And then go ahead and feel free to kind of use some of these uh, topics as prompts. You can, you can take it wherever your group would like to go, but we'd like to recommend that you consider how did it feel observing just that one area really in a focused way. Was it hard? Look at, look at what you actually wrote down. See if, see if it's all facts. Did anything slip away? Was it hard to try to focus on just those neutral observations? <coughs> did you notice any jumps in interpretation? So we're going to start with about eight minutes, and we really want you guys to just have that conversation with your small groups. And Mark and I will rotate around. If you do have any questions, just flag us down. Any questions before we get started? I still see some people building. They're trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So go ahead and jump into debrief. Um, I did a ton of voice. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing. We the 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 I'm going to play cards. So I noticed that Jess, you had a really soft tone. Sorry if I don't your name. I'm going to do more that one. I'm going to do Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so I wrote that you and the team had significant time so you didn't really know each other's names. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 So, so I, I heard a lot of hours. I also have that the tone evolved into a little bit frustrated one, like when you guys kind of come up with the right position for how you want to exit people. So I have really kind of what I picked up on. Something. I have more. I have more. I wrote that more kind of optimistic tone. What is it? What is your idea? Leverage for idea. The tone became more optimistic. And then your voice, Mark's voice, got louder and the idea of shaving. Did you ever figure out you were optimism equals louder voice? I mean, all the things almost inevitable. And then pronouns equals louder voice. So if there's only two teams that left today, so Yeah, 
We're often very aware as coaches and scrum masters, people that are sometimes observing a team of trying to not be intrusive to make sure that we're, you know, as observers invited and in a way, in the space in a way that doesn't impact the team. We have come to see that in this challenge, people are so focused on building their towers that it doesn't seem to weigh on them. But I'm curious, as the observers, were you guys thoughtful at all? Were you intentional at all about where you stood or, or how you kind of surrounded the team? to try to you know, have as little disruption as possible. Did any of that factor in? A little bit for me. Yeah, I saw the other side of the glass. Yeah, it was it. Yeah, so someone said they stood on the other side of the glass, maybe <laughs> some space, but also just to give a little separation. The only thing I observed about the observers was he was on the other side of the glass, and I couldn't figure out why he was different from <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it threw you off that yeah. he was doing something differently than what the other observers were doing. Okay. Observing the observer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's not really the like main piece of the exercise. It's kind of the bonus piece because obviously we're focusing today more on the actual observation and doing the observation. But it's just something interesting to think about when we're not in a fun meetup workshop setting of you know how you're sitting there scribbling your notes may be a little bit more noticed by the team. Actually, I have to say I think exactly the opposite. I used to play in the same place for the whole time. I get moved. Yeah. And I didn't go there. So you stayed where you were to try to just let them do their yeah. thing and that that you stay where you were. I'm here just observing and I'm not going to do anything different at all. Yeah. So you tried to stay as much out of their way yeah. as possible. Cool. So let's hear from a couple observers. How, how was this exercise? They, they were busy. They were building. We know they were bringing it to these card towers. But what, what did you guys experience as observers? What was hard? What felt different? So I had uh, body language, and I think um, providing context to words that I know 
from my own experiences. Yeah. Um, maybe the universal translate to the actual builders when they're experiencing that experience. Can you give us an example? So like, I put down anxiety, stress, um, and serious, right? Yeah. Like that's based on my experiences, but interpreting that to somebody else that I'm observing. Um, like I had uh, Mr. Christian, and I said, you know, she has a you know, WTF look, <laughs> and I was like, that I don't know is based on my experiences, but that might not be her yeah. experience. So just repeating for people on the live stream, you're saying that you know writing things down like anxiety and stressful and serious, and those are kind of shortcut words that for you, you know, you're taking notes, like that made sense to you. It, it, it totally told you what you thought was happening, but then when you went to share it, there was some curiosity, right? Like, well, what, what did I do that led you to that? What did that mean? What did you pick up on? And, and we saw how it was kind of hard. It's like, it seems so easy to write down anxiety. But like, if you later have to actually explain it, well, what actually made you think of it? Like, we're not used to taking maybe notes at that level of detail, but there was something that really, your brain did it so quickly that you just wrote down anxiety. But what triggered it to make you kind of use that as your as your note? And yeah, as you said, it's then that in the discussion, it's a little bit harder if the word that made total sense to you with, with no bad intention, just like, that's what I thought I saw, maybe doesn't quite resonate with the same person. That's really interesting. Thank you for sharing. What else? What else from any? What about this side of the room? Anyone? Yes. So you were observed. You were not the observer. But you know, you, I noticed, I didn't say I, noticed after the observer said, well, you didn't use any names, that at least I didn't take the time to look around and see the names of the people on my team. Because we were so, you know, I was so focused on doing it right and doing it fast. Um, and also the fact we noticed that we were all terrific. No one was that we were all, all on this side. So it was a little different than having people across the table to, to work with. Yeah. So space was a little off because we were. Well, you guys kept the physical space that was given. You, did you didn't choose to change it, it or, or move yeah. anywhere. You, yep. you kept the status quo. But yeah, that's an interesting observation, right? That you just didn't use names, although we didn't know each other very well, but we did have the name tags and we didn't use them. Yeah, so that's an interesting observation. What, I'm curious, what did that observation mean to you? Yeah. That I didn't take time yeah. to know my team first. And, um, no. Okay, mm -hmm. no, fair enough, fair enough. What else? Any other observers? Matthias? Um, for me, it, it, you know, even that we were told we observe very neutrally, I try to write down observations, and I think that went pretty well, and then when I <laughs> gave the feedback, I gave the observation, and then in a couple of cases added the interpretation, yeah. because it's just so, like, well, which of course made sense in your yeah. situation. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to say that one, so. That's exactly what I was telling these guys. It's so, I've noticed, and I've observed, that people are actually pretty good at writing down the factual observations, but when it comes time to explain them, to like tell the story to others, we, we add it on. It's just part of part of what our what we're used to, what our habit is, right? Is to make sense of these things. Yeah, and actually, part of, for me, part of it was um, when I read these things out just as facts, and like I, I got the impression that they it would be kind in a way to, mm -hmm. to embellish it a little. Yeah. yeah. So in some yeah. ways, it was to like soften the blow even though there weren't actually any blows. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like the observations themselves just seem kind of harsh in, 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 a, in a way. Like yeah, could, without context. They could be open to interpretation in a bad way, and I wanted to avoid that. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, what it was, which is interesting. Yeah, and that's interesting. And obviously, here today, we just asked you to kind of share the observations, so they, they were a little blunt or just factual. Obviously, if you were having a conversation with someone, you would be sharing them as an opening into a conversation and an opening to inquiry and understanding. So you would, you would follow them up, not just list off 20 facts, right? But definitely I can see how we, we, wa we want to make sure that our messages are well received. So it's hard to not just jump in and, and make sure that we tab them with a little, well, it's okay. You know, I would have done this too. You know, we, we just add on to more than just the factual observations. So one more question before we switch and give everyone else an opportunity. 
how does it feel for the observers, for you guys to just focus on that, that, one, that one observation area? It's harder because it's normally you focus harder. on multiple areas. Yeah. Did, did it, so it felt a little hard, a little unnatural, but what it... I heard the opposite of feeling. I thought it was kind of liberating. <laughs> liberating, yeah. Why liberating? Well, I was so accustomed to having to observe all these things, and I was here trying to register where I could just focus on one. Yeah. And then I could just really... See Increase focus. It, it was just it's the focus. Did you feel that you wrote more detailed observations on your area than you normally would have when you were trying to observe everything? obviously short right but I looked at some notes and they were they were pretty detailed about they moved here they went here you know like quick kind of play by play that it can be hard to capture when we're trying to take it all in all right well builders well done observers good job we're gonna go ahead and switch roles and Mark is going to walk you through what to expect for your round two challenge okay well <clears throat> if you thought that was tough <laughs> All right, so we are going to switch roles. So obviously that means builders are now observers. Observers are now builders, OK? The first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure the observers take a moment, the new observers take a moment to look through that handout, pick one observational detail that you would want, ideally not shared with somebody else. All right, so please take a moment to do that. Pick one item, and we'll get back to you in just a moment. You guys good? Yep. You guys good? Okay. You guys good? Everyone's got one? Okay. You guys good? Yeah? Okay. This team good? <laughs> you guys ready? <laughs> okay, you guys good? I think we're already we're waiting for this team. Any anyone you want. Just pick one, but anyone you want. Yeah. Okay. You guys good? We gotta move on. All right. All right. Okay, so observers have now identified the one that they want. Uh, I, like I said, ideally it's not shared with another person, but that's okay if it is. Uh, you will, like the other observers, be taking uh, one observation per sticky note. All right, so go ahead and begin, when the time comes, go ahead and write them down. What is your activity? You're dying to know, right? I will say this, it has nothing to do with index cards. <laughs> Sorry, but what your, what your task is going to be, and you, maybe if you want to use the flip side of, a, of a, the handout, uh, determine in five minutes the three most important characteristics of a high-performing team. So as a group of builders, you are building a list of the three most important characteristics of a high-performing team. Observers, you are silent as you observe. Five minutes. And you have five minutes beginning now. Three characteristics of a high performing team. Yeah. 
we can write our own. This yeah, is going to be a model. Should, yeah. Write them down. Sorry, I've been one person <laughs> writing all of these things. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> it's okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to do a title sheet? Yeah. Can we write on the actually? Can we write on the index cards? We can do some affinity mapping, maybe. Like, yeah. 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 I mean, you can see the energy that's in my energy you can see it for me, and you can see all the things like what would be really good. Let's do this. We have a good discussion. Why don't we group them, group them out and see if we can feed them out? So, and you can stop me if you think so. Energy and morale. Collaboration. We have a couple of these still. You're going to do a skills or collaboration. Is that a function of the high performance team or the high performance team? So now 23 seconds. So we should you correct
how we were going to fit. It looked like you were going to fight. And in the middle, it was actually point to your toes. The closer we got to the time limit, the closer we got to that wall, like you were going to hang back at first and then like, tie through to the wall. Like, I can do this myself on the revolution. I mean, I guess we won't be able to show how to break that. But body language is like the wrong guys, you know, you're so I'm kind of doing it. One person never touched the you know, I guess it's the But offered a lot of advice. So you know, while your hands are in your pocket, it's like, So I had decision making. Um, you guys definitely had a, a very little decision making mode that you all seem to fall into. When any of you want to move to the side, you're the answer to the calm question. So there was no, let's do it this way. It's like, do you think we should? Yeah. Question. Michael was the early decision driver, very, very close, and then it shifted to me. And I could not detect that anybody apparently objected to me left out as a, you know, kind of a decision driver that was called the question. Uh, I saw that, you know, when Michael was asking about the sticky, using the sticky note, notes as the kind of mode, uh, there was a very quick consensus on that. Uh, and then Josh questioned the group on idea generation, and you know the, the suggestion was let's make a decision to do this individually and then combine, put our efforts together. And it was about 30 seconds of discussion, and then we decided yes, consensus. And that's how we're going to do it. Um, and then we, so we all listened, we trusted each other to make projects. How are you doing on time? One more, one more minute, okay, to wrap up small yeah, group discussion. Um, one more minute. So Michael asked, are we ready? That's to, uh, and then the, deci the decision about how to uh, display these things on the wall is kind of where Pete really kind of stepped up as a person calling the question, how about if we do it this way? I brought up the thing about thought boarding. We started in the direction and it was almost kind of like an organic shift away from that to more sorting. Um, <laughs> so, your accounting is on stickies. You put them on the front and then put them on the wall and organize them on the wall. Um, and then uh, another kind of form of information sharing is with us and with you. In our own wall, you would point more than just like that. That's, I think, part of what well, it was. Well, it was a bit of a thing. Right, they'll do uh, so yeah, and then you iterate it on the first idea does not work. I think everybody kind of started seeing that. Like, there's a lot of things. 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 Like, there
Am I on? I'm on. Yeah. All right. So we're going to be wrapping up in about seven, eight minutes or so. Uh, but, <clears throat> okay. What was that like the second time around? We'll start with the observers. What, uh, being the fact, you know, the fact that you were observed this first time, first round, how did you approach observing this time? Do you think you did anything maybe a little bit differently? You were observed before. What was that like for you as observers this time? Yeah. Well, I was uh, very aware of sticking to the, 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 the facts, presenting the facts, and <laughs> staying away from making the, you know, the judgments. My area didn't have any judgments to be made anyway. So okay. But I, I was a person from the experience. So it helped, the first round helped you, uh, helped inform how you wanted to uh, just be an observer to the more in the second round. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who else? I saw a bunch of great things. So while yeah. I was completely aware of the fact that it's like, okay, I need to keep my judgments out of it, um, I did notice that in my observations, um, I had a really hard time doing that. Because some of the things that just kind of like naturally, it's like I came to a conclusion. So even though I was very conscious of that, I still noticed it creeping in. Yeah. And did you find that when you were writing or when you were <coughs> debriefing your team, or was it a mixture of both? It was a mixture of both. I think I was more conscious of it when I was writing, because I was like, nope, don't write that. Um, but when I was debriefing, I definitely saw some of that creep in. Yeah. And Matias had an interesting point. Like, you, you, you may feel you want to soften it in yes. some way. Did you feel that that might have been part of it? Like, okay. I won't be so cold about it. I'll maybe, you know, soften it a little bit. So. Yeah, we discussed it at the table, too, that some of the things she presented that were interpretations would have been really hard to spell out as just observations because okay. there's so many things that go, like the example was pensive. It's like, how do you express that as an observation? There's like 12 things you need to describe and make it you know, pensive. So that was, um, that jump was facilitated by the fact that the language goes to these short shortcuts. Sure. Yeah. So. yeah, it's been interesting hearing a number of you guys that chose tone of voice as your observation area. And Mark you and I even struggled when we said, well, can, what kind of examples can we come up with? You know, like the the like volume and, and the speed. And, but like we don't, we're not used to giving a lot of adjectives and a lot of words to really describe tone of voice. So that's why I saw lots of things, you know, show as like, uh, you know, focused or, or, you know, harsh. Or we just don't have a lot of, of words. Um, so it's, you know, it's still better to write down what we're observing to just kind of remember what we were thinking in the time, but, but it kind of gives us that push to say, can we dig a little deeper? Can we find ways to kind of record what got us there? Because we don't have this great vocabulary that we're used to pulling from to kind of give the, the reason behind some of our interpretations. That's true. That's true. Uh, yes. So we, we definitely, I think, took to heart the fact that we were supposed to keep it factual. However, Ricardo had some great feedback, which was maybe felt a little bit like we were lecturing. So obviously, we don't have the benefit of context and we some relationships, but it's still helpful to think that that's something we can keep in mind, which is the, the, that, that balance between just being factual and upfront versus having it come off as instructor, which obviously we want to go for. Right. right. Yeah. And, and we don't really want, like, again, if we're being factual, it's not, it shouldn't be like a list of facts that are necessarily negative, right? It's just what happened. And so I think the delivery of that, as we kind of talked about, is really important. Because when you do this, you're not just going to type them up and send them off in Excel. Here are all my observations, right? You're going to have a conversation. And if you ground that conversation in curiosity and understanding and being inquisitive, then it's just an entry into trying to understand that person and what what were they thinking and how were they feeling and what dynamics truly were at play with the individual or the group so that you can support them in a way that actually feels meaningful to them and isn't just my guess at what you mark need, right? I was wondering, Glenn, do you mind if I pick on you for a moment? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was observing Glenn as he was debriefing. Would you mind? Talking sure. a little bit about what you were doing and what, what kind of came about. Sure, yeah. So I was basically monitoring this team's physical <coughs> actions or physical spaces. And one of the things I noticed is when they're trying to bring up their final list, instead of putting it maybe in one place, like one big whiteboard, or maybe having four or five whiteboards on the on the walls like that, they're putting it on different cards. So I went and judged and said, you better have use those whiteboards over there and just these things because 
these little cards, you can't see what someone else wrote, and maybe not even to remember what they wrote. So I use a judgment um, instead of interpretation. Sure. And what was interesting about me watching Glenn was that the way you were doing it was you were politely suggesting better ways. Uh, you, it would have been better if you had circled around this way. And it would have been better if maybe you would lean back a little bit so the person could talk. And it was very polite. And it was you, obviously your intentions were good and they were they were helpful intentions. Well, maybe they weren't that good. Uh, <laughs> but that's really tricky because we want to help and we want to be able to provide assistance where we where we think we can. Uh, but again, we really want to check us check our, ourselves at the door. It can be really challenging, and some really good practice uh, for us tonight, and then maybe you know, even starting as early as tomorrow as we begin to observe our teams, maybe our spouse, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Thanks very much. I'm, I'm guessing that there were some observers in round one who wanted to throw in their two cents about how to build a better tower. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's hard when you're just in the observer role. So, I don't know, I'm kind of pushing back against the not judge thing, because I did decision making. <laughs> and I have 10 really factual observations on post-it notes of their decision making, and I still have no idea how they made their decisions. <laughs> they, somebody would say an idea and everybody else would go, oh yeah, it's a good idea, and it would be a good idea. That's a judgment. But they would then do it. I mean, it didn't, it, like, what were you I couldn't sure? tell another team how to do that. So it's right? not. I mean, not and every observation work. will require action, right? So this this may have been, like you may have observed this and said, oh, it looks like the team is coming to decisions in the time period that they expect. They're achieving their objectives. That that may not be something that you necessarily need to follow up and, and coach them through or, or provide feedback. Like, we're going to collect a lot of feedback. Not all of it has to warrant a conversation. But if, let's say, you had observed that Someone threw out an idea, and three of the four people said yes, and they always moved on, and the fourth person just said nothing. That might be something that you might want to follow up on. So I think it just depends. Hey, you had an awesome, high-functioning team over here. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's interesting, right? You look, I think, uh, Kristen, if you don't mind me sharing, you had noticed you started to take down some observations about pronouns, and initially, you were like, I'm not exactly sure what this is going to tell me. I don't know what I'm going to get out of it. And then do you want to share kind of how what you got to in the end? Yeah, I just noticed that I had to track the patterns throughout the five minutes. Because at first I just started by writing down the pronouns that people used. But that didn't, that didn't tell me anything. So then I started being able to draw patterns between like this person was more likely to use I, or this person was more likely to use we, or they used I when they were injecting an idea. And so throughout the five minutes, I built like throughout to tell me something useful, potentially useful, or something yeah. that can be shared. It might Otherwise, be. I was going to be like, let's, <laughs> we, <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need something you useful, know your helpful, or <laughs> interesting, at least to share. I felt stressed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I noticed was that because of the brevity of the activity, our behavior and our interactions were influenced. <coughs> Had it been an hour or half an hour, it would have been much different, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been different. Why, why do you think that is, though? I mean, it was such a short deadline that you know we, we missed some things or we added some things so that we made the deadline. Okay. As an observer. Both. Okay. Okay. We had to do storming, norming, forming, performing, and like about. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Whole team formation cycle. A good Rapid. taste. So, yes. Yeah. But please, that really resonated with me in the idea that just because you're an observer, there, there's almost a pressure that you have to come up with some kind of revolution or wisdom. And at the end of the day, you know, you're noting pronouns. And maybe, <laughs> maybe something comes with it and maybe something doesn't, but both are okay. So I, I like the idea of taking that pressure off of yourself that it's okay to just observe who comes from it without having an expectation to change the world. Yeah. And in the real world, real world, we, we wouldn't obviously, we, we would want to observe and use these ideas, but we're not necessarily going to have a debrief, except, you know, like obviously the way we did tonight. Okay. But we did have a question from a gentleman over, over here. It's like, well, what do you do in the real world if, if you 
if you do have feedback that you want to provide. And uh, some ideas that I have, and I'm certainly won't anyone else can throw some ideas out, but you know, there are there are better ways to broach these types of topics, I think, than, than other ways. Um, Julie provided one of the examples earlier today about in the crossing my arms. Stating the fact, impact feedback, some of you may have seen, but stating the, stating the fact, uh, Mark, I noticed in the meeting when you were slouching your arms were crossed, or I noticed that you were in the meeting and your arms were <coughs> what was going on with you there? Stating the fact and then, and then leaving it open into question, or powerful question, so that you would invite them to, to respond to you about you know, what was happening. And you're not obviously passing a judgment onto there, you looked really pissed what was going on there. Uh, but uh, op having an open-ended question and inviting them to answer. And there are a lot of resources out there. Uh, Jim was asking, you know, some things just off the top of my head, you know, Coaching Agile Teams by Lisa Adkins, both her book and her class. Uh, for those who want to get into uh, the coaching uh, itself, you know, CTI, Coactive, um, coactive Coaching, right? Yeah, coactive Coaching. coaching. Uh, even their Fundamentals course teaches you a lot about uh, these types of these types of ideas on what to do with this feedback that you're gathering. How you might be able to take it back to the team members and begin a conversation based on very factual uh, observations. Yeah, and one of the things that we didn't really get to today because we were you know, mostly hands-on just kind of practicing some of the, the observation techniques is that of course you would want to make sure that you're welcome, that you're invited, that you talk to a team about what your role is going to be, that they know why you're there, that your presence, you know, has has an understanding, um, you know, and, and that's that's important because it creates the dynamic that you're going to have. They expect the feedback. You, you've had some understanding that you know you're going to share some observations and ask for their their input and, and look for understanding. So. You know, today we all opted in by showing up to the meetup and being willing to participate in the exercise, but obviously that's not a, a piece that you would want to skip if you're working with a real team, right? Is making sure that they know what your role as an observer is and that you have an agreement about how you're going to share and discuss feedback. So yes. I, I have a question for the entire group, if you don't mind. No. Um, so we, we had five minutes to in twice to do a couple of things. And as somebody at that table there pointed out, like, you think that things would have been different and interactions would have been different if we would have had more time. And I, I want to posit that this was very true to life because most of us have jobs where you can't get it all done in the amount of time that you're really expected to get it done in. So my question is, how many of you found yourselves behaving or thinking in the same ways and the same patterns that you do during your day job? Because I did. It was really, actually, it was a real eye-opener for me that I, a couple of the things that I want to improve on as a professional came out, like, as an observer. I felt overworked, like, oh, man, i got to capture all this information about how they're decision-making. And to the point where I had all these sticky notes and somebody had to say, hey, that's enough. You've got to give somebody else a chance now. And which, which kind of, like, feeds into the time management thing for me. So I think that this was really instructive because it is very realistic and I think that all of us could take away something really valuable if we can be, you know, maybe just a little bit introspective about who was I in this exercise? Like, what was I doing? And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm doing it again. <laughs> I'm doing the things that make me stressed at work. I'm stressing myself over being an observer. So. Thank you. Yeah. Might be a great way to end, actually. I think that was some great words of, uh, for closing. Any other final? Well, I'm having said that. Kristen, can you talk? Observation? No, I can't yeah. that actually. But I had an interesting yeah. observation, yeah. which was um, I cared way more about the my co-builders and what they thought of me and my interaction than I did of the observers. I don't know if that says anything, but it was interesting. Like when you were asking us, did you behave any differently because you were being observed? For me, it was like I may have behaved differently or just been more thoughtful because I was around people that I didn't know working on something new, and I didn't think about the observers at all. Okay. It's interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Very good. Yes, so you are the last one. Yes. Thank you. So if we were to take this 
Gabe with building the walk uh, to our teams. Uh, should we maybe say three feet rather than five? Because I was very disappointed when you said, oh, we knew that you guys would not be able to do it. And I was thinking, what? Seriously? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So, so that, that, that's a really interesting question. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of, it, it, it kind of doesn't matter. It would be, we kind of said, you know, if you're going to use this, you can you can expand the time, you can shorten the time. But the thing about the five the five feet is that it, it instigates some pressure. And so what we wanted to give the observers was was a good amount to observe, right? So in that short time, you know you need to make decisions quickly. So how are you going to do that with a bunch of people that you haven't worked with before? When you look up and you say, oh, only a minute and a half left. Are you going to pivot? Are you going to change your plan? We wanted to actually create enough scenarios um, to give ample things for people to observe. So that's why we chose to keep it at five feet, even if you don't you know, accomplish it. But we also, we picked two very different challenges, right? So one was a little less realistic, more, more pressured, more building, kind of moving around. Then we had another challenge that you guys, I think most of you guys did actually come up with three characteristics for a high performing team in the five minutes, and it was a different type of interaction. So for us, that, that's why we picked it, but we definitely would encourage you to try it, tweak it, play with it, and let us know how it goes, because we're always looking for new ways to, uh, to add on and to make it a better workshop and simulation. So we'd love to hear it. Thank you. Great. All right, well, I think that does it for us this evening. Yep, Brian's going to take it. I think he's going to tell you about collecting the feedback and do the raffle. But thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. And now we've got a yeah, great segue. I don't know if you guys meant to do that. It was awesome. But, uh, hold on. Before you start moving around real quick, I want to give away the book. But also that uh, feedback is very valuable. Michael. Uh, we've got no cards out of the front door there with a little basket. so. This is our way of getting some feedback from you guys. Kurt? Jim? Never mind. Uh, so, what presentation wise, red, I, they shouldn't give that ever again. Yellow, not bad. Here's some tweaks we could, we could definitely do. Green, awesome. Still, we want to hear even how you can make it even more awesome. Uh, so, you can either just leave the green card in, a little basket, or leave a note. There's pens out there. Same thing from a Host and a facilities perspective, the food, the air conditioning, how was it? If it was crappy and you'd never come back here again, drop us a red note. Also, leave us a note so we can tweak and, and improve that. Yellow again, middle of the road, it was pretty good, but eh, please do this. And then green was like, you guys are great, keep doing it, but leave us a note as well. You know, any, any little feedback. So, both from the host and uh, space, but also from the uh, presentation, what Julie and Mark were able to provide. Uh, so great interaction, great uh, uh, RSVPs show up, one of our best so far. Hopefully that's the trend to come from here. Um, so I will stop talking and let Julie do the honors of drawing the book, The Scrum Field Guide. This is on the second round of this. It's a really good book. Um, Loredana? Yeah. 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 Thanks for out. One last thing, if I may. Uh, there, this Wednesday, I'm also going to be facilitating, this rarely happens this twice in one week, but I'm also facilitating the um, another meetup for Gale, which is the Games for Agility Learning and whatever it is. <laughs> Engagement. Um, it is a, another extremely interactive uh, exercise where we talk about self-organization and workflow which I love talking about workflow, so, or the flow of work. So if you can make it Wednesday, it's here. Please do, it's the Gale Meetup, and uh, I'll be here as well. So yeah. to see you all back here. And we won't be serving the same pizza, there'll be new. Yeah, new there will be new. <laughs> Please, grab some pizza, there's plenty. Uh, feed your kids, feed your family members, feed yourself, feed your dogs, whatever. All right, have a good night. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs>